record first. Yeah, let's start. And then I will demonstrate like it, how you can write a, a shell code for the 32-bit and 64-bit machine, and then how you can reduce the zeros for that. And to start with the challenge, I will demonstrate uh, how you can start. So I will just remove my week three referee, and then like it to work with the uh, uh, week three challenges. So as we do for the week one and week two, I just run the fetch week three first. Then if you get into week three directory, then you can see lots of files like these, uh, a lot, lots of directories like these uh, per each challenge. And uh, we will go over shellcode 32, shellcode 64, and non-zero shellcode 32, and non-zero shellcode 64 today. And uh, from the lecture, uh, the uh, the purpose of the writing the shellcode is like the, uh, in the most of the cases in the, uh, your uh, potential attack target, they do not have the function like a get a shell uh, we can conveniently return to that function to get a shell and read the flag. So what shellcode is doing is like that we want to write a opcode uh, for the uh, getting the privilege and then the running the shell uh, to, and then make them as an opcode and then upload uh, and inject that to the program. And so we want to use that as a, like a return address. And then if we return to the location of the shellcode, then it will execute that. So we can uh, literally create it, create a get a shell like function uh, in the program by having just a byte stream as our input. So we are basically writing a function as a stream of the string. And then uh, we will later use that uh, to exploit the program. So basic structure of the uh, week three challenges are uh, all these are something named with the shellcode are the uh, challenges that you need to write the shellcode. And then the challenges tagged with the stack overflow something are like the challenges that does not contain get a shell, but you should use your shellcode to exploit the challenge. So I will explain uh, how you can actually use the shellcode in the lecture in next Tuesday. But uh, today we will go over shellcode, uh, how to write your own shellcode. So the first challenge uh, we will take a look at is uh, shellcode 32, writing the 32-bit shellcode. Then what it says is like the write a 32-bit shellcode that runs uh, these two lines of code. So it will be simple. And then you need to put the shellcode binary in the shellcode.bin. So, so from this kind of structure, you might don't know about like how to start, but uh, I prepared a directory called a shellcode template in here. So to start with the writing the shellcode, uh, what I recommend is like the copy everything from shellcode template to the challenge directory. So if you run this, then you will see that the, these files are coming from there. And then you can ignore about the shellcode that bin because that, that will be created by the, as a result of the writing of the your shellcode. So uh, it has a make file. So uh, how we build is like the, for the 32-bit shellcode, if we type make 32, then it will build a 32-bit shellcode out of like a shellcode that has the source code. And then if you do make 64, then it will build a 64-bit uh, shellcode for that. So I prepared a make file script for you. So just copy all the files from the shellcode template directory and then start with that. And you can start writing uh, your shellcode uh, from uh, this shellcode.s file. So let's try to edit that file. And then the, I prepared some of the hints as a comments in the code. So for the objective, our objective is like the uh, call get EGID first, and then use that, that EGID as arguments for the set regid to change the real and effective group ID to the effective group ID, and then run the shell. Yeah. So the objective are very, is very simple. And then for 32-bit, you can use a little bit of hints at here. And then for 64-bit, you can use hints at here. Yeah. 
And then you can write your shellcode by following uh, the instructions written in here. So what we need to do is like the, we need to call get EGID, set EGID, exact VE. So for the first thing, it says uh, we need to call get EGID. Yeah. Then how to do that is, so for this, the, all these kind of functions are system call. And to call the system call, we need to set the, set the system call number to EAX. And then the system call number for get EGID is at the dollar sys get EGID. And to put that to EAX, what we can do is sys get EGID to EAX. That's it. And then uh, because uh, get EGID does not have any kind of arguments uh, to invoke the system call, we can in, uh, we can generate the software interrupt 0x80, then it will invoke the system call. So the system call is something like a, you have a, your program, so program will execute like this. And then if you invoke the system call, the execution write uh, will goes to the operating system and then operating system will run that uh, get EGID system call and then return back to the program and then program continues to run. And when the operating uh, execution returns from the operating system to the program, uh, the EAX register will store the return value of the this system call. So right now you can assume that EAX stores the result of the get EGID. Yeah. And then the next call uh, you need to make is a set for EGID and then you want to put the result of the EAX and EAX as a, it's a first and second argument. So you want to call some of the system call like this. And uh, let's do the same thing first to call the set regid system call. You need to move the system call number to EAX and then invoke system call. Something like this. But the problem is like that if we do this first, then we overwrite the return value of the get EGID. And we need to set this as arguments for the, this function. And so, and the first argument, uh, we need to put that on the EBX register. So we need to move EAX to EBX to set the first argument and the move EAX to ECX to set the second argument. And then after this point, we don't need to use uh, this EAX value uh, no more. So we can overwrite uh, the EAX register value with the uh, system call number and then invoke the system call. Then it will call set regid. And then finally, we need to call exec VE, yeah. So it is a long description. And uh, what we need to do is like the exec VE requires a first argument as a file path, second argument as a argument vector, third argument as a uh, environment for pointer. So the, for the students who want to know more about like the, how to set the arg vector when the environmental variable pointer correctly, and please follow the number two and three. But uh, as a shortcut, what we can do is like we can set, we can just set these two arguments as a null. In that case, like its operating system will ignore the argument vector and the environmental uh, variable pointer and just use this file name and then try to run that. So what we gonna do is like if it run exec be slash slash bnsh zero zero. And to do that, so let's do the setting the EAX register first. So move sys exec v to EAX, and then you want to invoke system call. But before that, we need to set the third argument, and then third argument 
should be at the EDX register. So move zero to EDX. So setting this third argument. And then to set the second argument, move zero to ECX. And then we need to set the first argument. And then first argument is not a value, it's a string. And what we need to do is like, we need to put some of the string in the memory. And then we need to take the address of the that string to the EVX register, which is the first argument. And to do that, uh, I prepare some of the hint that you can use. So you can just uh, copy and paste all these things. So for example, uh, what we want to do is on the stack, we want to put null byte here and then some of the string like this, slash slash bi and sh and zero. Then if we make the ESP to point here, then reading from here to up there, and that will be slash slash b i n slash s h and then null byte. So we can create a byte string and on the stack and then use ESP as the address of it. And to do that, what we can do is push zero first to mark the end of the string uh, with the null byte and then we need to put n slash sh. So I prepare the that string for you right here. So this is the pushing n slash sh. And because this is a little Indian machine, this character is n slash s h and then this one and this string is slash slash bi and then now esp points to the string so we can move ESP to EBX, then it's something like calling EXCCV 00. Yeah. So this is the end of the writing this shellcode. And let me combine everything in the bottom to, to easy to see everything. So what I will do is just copy paste all the code, then put it in here. So right now what we have is calling set EGID and put that, uh, calling get EGID, and then put the result of the get EGID as an arguments to the set EGID, and then build a string, set the first argument as a BNSH string, and set the second argument as a zero, third argument as a zero, and set the system call number for the exact BE, and then run it. So I just used a simple uh, move and int push these kind of the, the, the three uh, instructions and to compose the shellcode. And I also uh, prepare that uh, you can actually debug your shellcode. And then let me show you how you can debug your shellcode. And also we will check if uh, this shellcode works correctly or not. So to build the shellcode, right now we are working for the 32-bit challenge. In that case, after writing the shellcode.s, uh, run make32. Then it will build the shellcode.s as a 32-bit code. And then it will generate the two files. One is this shellcode binary. 
And then second is the, this shellcode.bin. And this shellcode.bin will be used by the challenge. So the after uh, generating shellcode.bin, if you run this challenge binary, then it, this challenge binary will directly read this file and then try to run the shellcode. But before doing that, uh, I created a shellcode, uh, this binary, for you to debug your shellcode. So maybe your shellcode could work as a one-shot, but sometimes it does not. In that case, you guys need to know about like the how you can uh, debug the shellcode and then try to fix the, what's wrong in there. So to debug the shellcode, just attach GDB to the compiled shellcode binary. And then set the breakpoint and the main and run it. Then it will start exactly at the point you wrote the shellcode. So the first instruction that we wrote was move system call number of the get EGID, which is a 50. So 0x32 is like 48 plus 2 is 50 to EAX. And then the next instruction is to call the invoke the system call, interrupt the 0x80. And then the next instruction is to move the return value to the first argument, move the return value to the second argument and move the system call number of the set or EGID to EAX, and then invoke the system call. And let's follow the instruction on GDB and check if these are correct or not. So I will just do ni command, next instruction. And then, so now the value of the EAX has been changed to the 32. And then our debugger smartly knows that the, we are trying to call the sys get EGID. Uh, because uh, GDB knows that, that this instruction is about the calling the system call, and then it automatically detects the EAX value, and then the let us know like the which system call uh, it will call. So it will call get EGID, and then focus on the EAX register. So right now it's uh, num the system call number of a get EGID, but if I do next instruction, then it will invoke the system call, and then return from the operating system, so the return value of the get EGID will be stored into the EAX register. So I will do an I, then the value of the EAX has been changed to 3E9, uh, 3E9 which is a uh, 3E8 is a 1000. So that value is a 1001. Yeah. And the reason is if I do ID, my group ID is a 1001. Yeah. So the right now, we are running the shellcode binary, which is not privileged at all. So it will run within my GID as an effective GID. And then the number 3E9 is 1001. Yeah. And then you will have a different number based on the your GID. So if you can see your GID and at the like a, uh, the value of the EAX, then the, you can regard that as a your system call invocation was successful. And then let's move on to the next instruction. So the next instruction was like the moving the return value to EBX. So now EBX has the same value of the EAX. And then the next instruction is about setting the value of the ECX. So ECX now has the same value as the EAX. And then next is setting the system call number as a set regid. Now we are seeing that the current system call is set regid, and then our GDB automatically detects the argument. So we can see that uh, we are successfully calling set regid with the return value of the uh, get egid. And then the return value of the set regid was zero. And then the, if the system call set regid, it does not have the return value. So if it returns a zero, then it means there's no error. But if it returns a negative number, then it says that there is, are some of the error. So return value zero means like our system call was successful. And finally, we are now at the like invocation of the invoking the uh, exec VE. And, uh, but the, as a first step, we build a string on the stack. And 
please take a look at the stack. Right now, it has some of the weird values here. So these are the uh, indicating that okay, what are the things are stored into the stack. But the first instruction uh, we will execute is a push zero. So see how a stack will be changing. So it pushes zero at here. And then next, n slash sh. So it will store n slash sh here. Yeah. And then next instruction, it will store slash slash bi. And then it will be connected to n sh and then null byte. So if we read a string from current ESP by uh, after executing these three instructions, for example. So if we uh, convert the uh, uh, address pointed by the ESP as a string, then now we are seeing that the slash slash bin slash sh, yeah, right? And then if we move the ESP to EBX, then we can put the string of the slash slash bin slash sh, bin sh to EBX as a first argument. And then the next instruction will set the second argument, ECX is a zero. The third argument, uh, the EDX is a zero. And then move 11, 0xv is 11 to EAX, which is the system call number of the exact VE. And then invoke the system call. And we can also check the path argument is a slash slash VNSH. Second argument is a zero. Third argument is a zero. So if we continue to execute that, then it will run the shell. Yeah. So in GDB, uh, because of the debugging works weirdly, so if you just run one command, it will finish. But uh, it means that the, your shellcode execution was uh, successful. And that if you want to check uh, whether the system call works correctly or not, you can also use S trace, but uh, right now uh, it will print out like a, it will execute the shell and then S trace will print out all the system call traces that, so uh, uh, first like the, I need to explain what S trace does. So the program S, uh, S trace uh, shows that the, what kind of system call this program uh, invokes. So it will print out all the system call the program invokes and if we just run it, then you can see lots of system calls because it will run the shell code and also run the shell. Then the shell program invokes a lots of system call. And if we get back to the start of the program, then uh, you can see somewhere here. Yeah, we executed the shell code program and then Yeah, around here, you can see that we invoke the get EGID, set EGID, and EXECVE. Yeah. So our shellcode is running correctly. And after writing your shellcode, uh, you can see the shellcode that bin at here. And to check uh, how your shellcode converted into the opcode, uh, I prepared another command called make obj dump then you can see uh, how your shellcode can be converted as a byte string like this. So move 0x32 to EAX can be converted as a B8 32000000. And then calling an interrupt to 0x80 is a CD80, something like this. So in total, the length of the shellcode is like 2f plus 1. So that's actually 49 bytes. Yeah. And then the, after building this shellcode, uh, if you do make 32, it will automatically generate the shellcode.bin. And if you run this shellcode32 binary, then it will automatically take uh, this shellcode.bin file and then run that shellcode. So I will just run it. Then it read the shellcode from shellcode.bin and run it. And because we wrote the shellcode correctly, then we can inherit the group ID 
because uh, this binary program is uh, privileged. Uh, this is how you can write the 32-bit uh, shellcode and then debug uh, how, uh, whether like the, the shellcode works correctly or not uh, by attaching GDB. And also you can check the, what is the opcode of the shellcode by running a make object dump or something. Uh, any questions up to this point? Uh, there's uh, one question. Yeah. Can I see the shellcode that S again? Yes, sure. Yeah. This is the shellcode that S that I wrote. So set get EGID and then move the return value to the others. So call set regid and then build a string and then exact B. And then let's move on to the shellcode 64, the second challenge. Then the purpose of the, this challenge is uh, to write a 64-bit shellcode. And then what we need to do is the, exactly the same, but the change thing was uh, the bit width and also the argument order because uh, previously, we put the system call number and EAX and EBX, ECX, EDX, that's the argument number order. But in 64-bit, uh, we need to put the system call number to RAX and then RDI, RSI, RDX, RCX. These are the system call, uh, the argument in order. Yeah. Uh, another question, uh, the instruction uh, make 32 to convert the shellcode to bin. Yes. So I prepared this uh, make file script in the shellcode template. And then uh, if you can take a look at that, uh, there are commands like uh, make 32, make 64, make obj dump. Yeah. If you do make 632, make 32, then it will compile it as a 32-bit shellcode. And then if you run the uh, make 64, then it will compile that to into like 64-bit shellcode. So, Previously, I used uh, make32, but in this challenge tutorial for the 64-bit one, I will use uh, make64. So to start with the, this challenge, so what you need to do is copy all the file from the shellcode template to this directory. And then you can see the make file, shellcode.bin, shellcode.o, shellcode.s, but you can ignore these two because these two will uh, be changed uh, if you change the shellcode.s and then run make64. And now uh, we know what to do, but the, for the 64-bit, uh, it'll be a little bit different. So the system call number for the 64-bit is a little different. So previously, uh, the system call number of the get EGID was uh, 50, which is 0x32 but this number is a 108. It's totally different. But uh, you don't need to worry about that because uh, we are using this uh, syscall header file, and then it defined all the system call numbers with this kind of the sys, syscall name symbol. So we will just use that. So don't worry about that. So the first thing is like that we need to call get EGID. And to do that, we can do the same thing, move sys, get EGID to which register? RAX, because this is a 64-bit uh, shellcode. And then in 64-bit, we don't use int 0x80 to invoke the system call. We just run syscall. That's it. And then same thing. Uh, after the program invokes the system call, it will return. And the return value will be stored into the RAX register. And for the next, uh, we want to call set regid RAX, RAX, 
the value of the RAX as an argument. So to do that, we need to set the sec first argument to the value of the RAX. So the first argument in 64-bit is at RDI, and the second argument is at RSI. So we set the first and second argument, and then set the system call number, set regid, and then syscall. So these four lines will call uh, set regid uh, with the return value of the get effective GID. And then the last step is about uh, calling the exe in sh 0, 0. And uh, let's start with the, the uh, backward first. So we can move sys exec v to rax, then syscall. And then setting the third argument. So the argument order was rdi, rsi, rdx, rcx, r8, r9. So we need to set the rdx as 0, then rsi as 0, and then rdi as the string. Yeah. And then previously, we used a push 4 byte uh, to build the string. But at here, uh, because our uh, instruction, uh, so there's no 8 byte push with the immediate value. I don't know why Intel has not created like that kind of instruction at all. So what we need to do is like we need to move eight byte value to some of the register and we can push the register. So how you can build the string is, so you can move slash slash B I N slash S H this, this uh, string data to R B X and then push zero and push rbx. In that case, it will push zero first, and then another, like the slash slash binsh. Yeah, that eight bytes can be pushed with uh, by transferring the value to the register first, and then push that into the uh, stack. So we need to move the eight byte value to the register first, because uh, there is no eight byte push uh, instruction in the Intel architecture. And then after pushing this zero and then eight byte, now the RSP, the stack pointer, points to the uh, start of the string. So we need to move RSP to our, uh, what is the first argument, RDI. Then the first argument will be slash slash BINSH string. Second argument zero, third argument zero, and then call exactly. And let's check if this shellcode compiles well and run correctly. Now we will do make 64 because it's a 64 bit shellcode. And then it will generate the shellcode.bin and the shellcode this binary. And to check that, we will attach GDB and breakpoint at main and run it. So now the first instruction is uh, calling get EGID. So it puts some of the value to RAX. And then it says calling syscall to get EGID. Then I will do the next instruction. And then it successfully fetched the return value from the operating system. Uh, 3E9 is a 1001, which is my group ID. And then return value goes to the first argument, which is RDI. Second argument should be at the RSI. So both RDI and RSI value will be replaced with the return value stored at RAX. And then we will move the system call number of the set regid to the RAX and then syscall. So GDB shows that we are calling set regid with the real group ID as a this number, effective group ID as a this number. So this is good, yeah. And then the next instruction is like the, we just use the move instruction, but the, it will, uh, the 
to be uh, specifically uh, Intel uses a move absolute value Q as a Q word, which is eight bytes. So what it means is like uh, it will move eight byte to the target register. So we will put the, this slash slash BINSH to the RBX and then take a look at the stack. We will push zero first and then push RBX. And after push this, uh, if we read the string from the stack pointer RSP, then it's a string slash slash bin sh and with the null byte. And then we move RSP, the address of the string, to RDI, which is the first argument. So the first argument stores the pointer to the bin sh string. And then second argument, RSI will be zero. And the third argument, RDX will be zero. And then that we set the system call number as a exact B and it says it is calling it's calling pinsh zero zero. And if we continue, then it runs the shell. And right now it does not give the group ID because we just run the non unprivileged binary. Then now we know that the, this shell code works, then Try to run the privileged binary. Then if we read the shellcode from the shellcode.bin, then you can inherit the group ID and you can cat the flag. And then to see how this uh, uh, how this shellcode is written, make obj dump. run the command that make obj dump then you can take a look at the this these kind of the uh, upcode yeah. uh, any questions for the writing 64-bit shellcode so the difference is like that we use a different register order for the argument passing RDI, RSI, RDX, RCX, R8, R9, uh, which was like the EBX, ECX, EDX, ESI, EDI, ESI, yeah, ESI, EDI, I don't know. Yeah, you can refer to the slide for that. Yeah, so make sure that the, you have the correct argument order for these kind of thing. But the same thing is like that we need to put the uh, system call number to RAX and the return value will be stored to the RAX register. And another different thing is like we will use a syscall instruction uh, instead of uh, invoking the interrupt uh, in invoking the system call uh, by uh, invoking the interrupt to 0x80 in 32-bit. So that's the difference. And let me move on to like uh, writing the shellcode with the non-zero one. Uh, the reason why we need to write a non-zero uh, shellcode is that, so suppose we have a, this kind of the shellcode and we want to put uh, the entire shellcode as an input to the program, but uh, if the program uses a scanf or some of the string related function to copy the string uh, for having a buffer overflow or something, yeah, in that case, if we have a zero byte here, then the program will regard your shellcode ends at here. It does not copy the entire shellcode, but it will end at here. So you cannot use the rest of the code. So it's quite important to remove the null byte. So remo removing all these kind of the zeros uh, from the shellcode to not uh, prohibit your shellcode from copying to the program even with the like a string related, related function. Yeah. And then I will demonstrate how you can remove all the shell code, uh, all the zeros in your 32-bit shell code. So to do that, I will get into the non-zero shell code 32-bit and then copy all the template file to here, but I will also copy shell code 32-bit the shellcode that we wrote, that as file to here. Yeah. Then make 32, make obj dump, 
then if we run it, then it will run the shell code. It will run the shell correctly. But if we run this challenge binary, then it says you have a zero character at position two, character zero. What it means is a position zero, one, two. So position at here, we have a zero character. So uh, this program will not interpret our shell code as a uh, real shell code and then reject it. So we need to remove all the zeros from the shell code. And to do that, uh, let's see. The shell code and also at the same time I will copy and paste all the opcodes to remove zeros from the shell code. So our first instruction, it has three zeros in here because we have uh, move 032 to EAX. And how can we remove a zero from here? So one of the way is that like we can, uh, so because this value is 32 and then we are running a 32 bit machine and that's why it regards the entire uh, number as a four bytes. And then it says 32, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Yeah. So because we just put 32 here, so it will put 32, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. That's why we have zeros. And to remove zero from here, what we can do is like we know that the number 32 is required for the EAX. Then what we can do is can we move 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 33 to EAX and subtract 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01 from EAX instead of doing this? Then it will result in just remaining the value 32 to EAX. So let's try to do that. So I will do make 32. Make obj dump. Check if there's a, any kind of zero in the first three instruction. We cannot find any no double zero. So this zero one is a byte one, so it's okay. So there will be no double zero, so there will be no zero character. So previously uh, running this will detect the zero byte at the position two, but now it complains about the position eighteen. So this is zero. So we can pass uh, these five lines of the uh, instructions. And at the same time, after removing the zero, uh, you also need to check if like if that runs correctly. So to do that, we can attach GDB to the shellcode binary, breakpoint at main, and run it. So the first instruction is that now it moves the bigger number to EAX, and then Subtract one zero one zero one zero one. Then, as a result, we could have a thirty two in here. Yeah. So, by having simple calculation, yeah, you can uh, remove all the zeros, but still you can have zero x thirty two, the value that you want at here. And then second zero comes from the moving 0x47 to EAX. Then let's use the same trick. For example, instead of doing this, we know that the, this value is 47 here. Yeah. Then move 0101048 to EAX. Move and then subtract 01. 0, 01 to EAX. And as a result, it will store the value 47 here. Right. There is a one question. Yeah. Oh, so 
uh, one question is uh, like, could you say again why we have to remove zeros? Yeah. So the reason why we are building the shell code is that like we want to put because there is a no in the target program target program that you want to attack for the buffer overflow uh, exploit. Previously, we had a get a shell function, and that function is created by me uh, to let you guys just focus on the uh, changing the return address to the get a shell function. But in the regular program, there will be no function like get a shell. Uh, because like the uh, no one, uh, if there's a no such a usage at all, then like the developers will never write that kind of code. So you need to figure out like the how you can uh, escalate your privilege and then execute the shell. And that's why we are writing this shell code. And we need to upload or like not an upload, like we need to put the shell code uh, in somewhere in the memory space of the program. But suppose the program accepts some of the uh, string data, for example. So right now, so all the challenges in uh, week two uses a read to read the data. But instead of the using the read system call, suppose we use the scanf, which reads the string. So in that case, uh, if you put all the data as a string, then it will read up to here, and then it will stop at the null byte because null means the end of the string. But if we don't have like an, uh, any kind of zero at all, then it will read entire shellcode correctly. That's why we need to remove the zero. Yeah, that's the thing. So the null byte zero means the end of the string. That's why. So now we remove the zero up to here. And then let's check. Make 32, make obj dump. So we have no zero up to this point. Yeah. And then let's check if it runs correctly. Breakpoint at main, run it. So that I will skip first three instructions because it, it was like a correct for the running the get EGID. And then we didn't change these two instructions. And then the next two instructions about like putting 0x48, 47 to EAX. So it will set EAX as a this value and then subtract the this value, to set it as a 0x47. Then we can call set EGID. Yeah. Then it runs correctly. Yeah. Now we check that like they're up to uh, running the set regi ID, it runs correctly. And then the final thing is like that we need to remove lots of zeros here. Yeah. And then uh, I will uh, show you that uh, some of the easy way to create zero. So if you do XOR EAX EAX, then the value of the EAX will be zero. Because uh, exclusive or uh, if we apply that to the same number, then exclusive or makes a different bit to be one and then same bits to be zero. So all the bits will be the same if we supply the same number EAX and EAX. So the result of the, this instruction will be always resulting uh, putting the zero in the EAX. So. This is uh, one of the way that the, you can create zero with two bytes. And instead of the push zero, you can push EAX. And also, instead of the move zero to ECX, you can move EAX to ECX because we made the EAX to be zero. Then same thing about here, EAX to EDX. Let's check it. Make 32 first, and then make obj dump. Then we are not seeing any kind of zero up to this point. And the last one, we have a move 0xb to eax. So this is problematic instruction, but uh, there is a trick to 
now we know that trick two removes the zero here. Now we know that the EAX is zero. And then there's an instruction, move byte. We can move just one byte. EXECV, system call number, to the EAX register. But the last byte, the last one byte of the EAX register can be referred as a AL register. So if we write the instruction like this, so it will change. So it has a 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, these four bytes. But uh, it will just overwrite one byte to the last byte of the EAX. And then what we need is just changing the last byte as a 0xb, which is the value of the EXECV. So we can write the instruction like this. Then if we check the object dump, then now we do not have any kind of zero here. But the important thing is like the uh, to check if this shellcode is correct or not. So to do that, attach GDB again, breakpoint and main and run it. So I will skip up to set regi ID. And then the next instruction is the XOR, EAX, EAX. So fortunately, we have an EAX value as a zero. Uh, we don't have to do that. But if we run it, then the value of EAX will be zero. And instead of the push zero, we push EAX. Then on the stack, we will push the value of the EAX, which is a zero. And then build the string. So now we have a bin sh. And then move that to ebx and then we want to set ecx and edx are zero but now we have a eax as a zero so move eax to ecx then it'll be zero eax to edx then edx will be zero and then move byte zero xb to al so it will just change the last byte of the eax then it's about executing exact ve to bin sh so the shellcode is cracked we remove all the zeros and if you run non zero shellcode 32 then you can pass the challenge uh, this is how you can remove zero from the shellcode uh, any question up to this point so we have seen that how we can write a 32-bit shellcode uh, in a naive way uh, uh, while we don't care about the having zero at the first time. And then at this time, uh, we learned about the how we can remove zero uh, by taking a look at the older opcodes here. And then uh, there's another command to run make print. Then the, it will print a string as a string that you can use in Python. Yeah. So this is your shellcode string that you can use uh, in Pontool's script. Uh, there is a one question. Yeah. I think my code is the same as yours, but I got an error when I do make 32. That means your code is not same with mine. Yeah. If your code is exactly same with mine, then you will not get an error. And then uh, please try to fix your code uh, de uh, depending on the error message. Yeah. And for those kind of details, uh, please uh, ask questions uh, later on Discord, then uh, I will handle that for you. And then let's move on to the final uh, tutorial uh, for non-zero shellcode 64. So we will basically do the similar thing, uh, what we did for the changing this uh, shellcode that includes zero for 32-bit to non-zero shellcode 32. And we will do the same thing for uh, shellcode that contains zero for 64-bit and translate that to non-zero shellcode for the 64-bit. And the first step to start with that is uh, we need to copy all the shellcode template to here. And we will also copy shellcode 64 shellcode.s to here. 
then we will build with the make 64 then make obj dump then we see lots of zeros in here yeah and then uh, in this case i will introduce some more tricks that you can remove zero in a more clever way yeah. and uh, let's get into the shellcode that as So we have an upcursor like this, and the first instruction move get egid to rax. Yeah, that has a problem. But uh, let me introduce one of the trick. If you do push, just get egid and pop rax. So what these two instructions are doing is like they push one byte value on the stack and then pop the value to the RAX. But because Intel architecture has been developed from the 8-bit CPU, 16-bit CPU, 32-bit CPU, and 64-bit. So the interesting thing is like the, if we push one byte. So this instruction is actually push B one byte. Yeah, If we push uh, one byte, then it will push uh, one byte to the entire eight byte, yeah. So this is somewhat magical, but uh, it works like that, yeah. So if we, so what you can do is uh, push one byte and pop RAX, then you can set the value of the RAX with the, this small value uh, without having any kind of zero. I will show you that with the uh, the actual object dump. So make sixty four and then make object dump. So it push 6C, there's a no zero at all, then pop to RAX and invoke system call. And then let's see how it works with GDB. Set break to point and main and run it. So the first instruction is the push 6C. So it will push 6C on the stack and then it will pop RAX so take a look at the value of the RAX. Now it's a 6C. So to set one byte, what you can do is push and pop. Yeah. Then you can uh, set the one byte value to the register without having any kind of zero. Yeah. That is one of the trick. So in that case, we can change this as a push sys set regid pop rax2 right remove this then i will do make 64 again make object dump then we do not have zero up to this point and then next zero is this one yeah And we know how to create zero here. For example, xor, rax, rax, then push rax instead of zero, move rax instead of zero, move rax instead of zero. And then for the final one, we can use we can also use push pop trick. like this. Then I will build the shell code. Then take a look at the object dump. Then we cannot see any kind of zero here. And then let's see if it works correctly. Set a breakpoint and main, run it. So push 6C pop RAX, so now RAX is a 6C here, then system call. There was a one question, yeah. The trick could do in 32-bit version too. Yes, definitely. Yeah, you can use the same trick in the 32-bit version.
I didn't introduce that at first at 32 bit because I want to tell you that the, some of the basic ideas, like the, with some of the operations, we can create the, some of the value. But the, there's another trick like this. Uh, if you are good at like understanding like the, how each instruction works, then you can use uh, this kind of trick in uh, in writing the shellcode. And uh, make sure that, that there is a short shellcode challenge. And then if you notice that. Uh, adding and subtracting and uh, moving and subtracting a uh, register will take uh, 10 bytes. Yeah. But the uh, push and pop will be ending with the three bytes for uh, putting a value to a register. In that case, uh, you can reduce a uh, lot of uh, bytes uh, to uh, writing the shellcode. So right now we successfully call the get EGID and then put the return value to first and second argument and push 0 72 here, and then pop RAX. So RAX value is at the 72. It calls set reg ID. And then it move the slash slash BNSH to RBX. And then XOR RAX RAX. So RAX will be zero. Push RAX. So zero has been pushed here. Push RBX. So now we build the string. And then move the step pointer to the first argument, RDI. So RDI points to the BNSH. And RAX is 0, so we put 0 on RSI, RDX as a second and third argument. Yeah. And then push 3B, which is the system call number for the uh, exact VE. And then pop RAX. So now we have RAX as a 3B. And then it will call exact VE. So now we see that it will call exact VE with these arguments. So the shellcode is correct. So if you run non zero shellcode 64, it will pass. And then you can get the group ID. So this is the resulting shellcode. And then you can do it uh, in a many different ways. And also you can uh, write a more shorter shellcode than the, what I just did, because I didn't do much of the optimization for it. And please think about like the, how can you write a more shorter shellcode or like another restrictions are. So it says like the 464 bit, there's a challenge that you can only use ASCII characters. For example, ASCII characters are zero one to seven F. So you cannot use like 89 BB or 89, this kind of the uh, E7, this kind of the opcode, yeah. So you need to use it. You need to think about like a different instruction uh, to move the uh, stack pointer to RDI because you cannot use uh, this instruction uh, in this case. And also for the short shellcode 32 and 64, you need to make the shellcode entire length to be less than or equal to 12 bytes. But right now, our shellcode length is 45 bytes. Yeah, it's quite long. Yeah. Then think about how you can reduce the length of the shellcode uh, down to 12 or like shorter bytes. And also for the alphanumeric shellcode, uh, you need to just use like the capital. A from A to Z, a lowercase from A to Z, and number zero to nine. Yeah. In that case, so right now we have uh, some of the non-printable characters, a zero F, uh, zero five, or eighty nine, something like this. So you cannot read the shellcode. But if you can successfully write the alpha numeric shellcode, then you can actually see all the alphabet or numbers, so you can read out your shellcode. So these are the challenges for the week three. And uh, I will explain about like a stack overflow, this kind of the how to use shellcode challenges in the uh, next tutorial. Uh, any questions? Yes. So the uh, after the cloud process the, this recording, yeah, then I will uh, upload the video as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, 
the question was about like the could you post this record earlier yeah Any other question? Uh, if there is a no, uh, yeah, so is the week three extra necessary to do? No, it's just an extra credit challenge. So, uh, what that means is like that that will not so not doing that will not uh, degrade your grade points but uh, if you earn that points then like you can have uh, extra points on it so yeah but it will be very fun yeah so i know that the uh, writing an alpha numeric shell code requires uh, like the, a lot of time so i said uh, 100 points for that but uh, it's worth to try because it's very fun So uh, another question was uh, posted in the chat room is like, can I use Python dash C print string? Yeah, cat for the like the shellcode sixty four. Yeah, uh, you cannot do that because like the I designed the, this uh, shellcode sixty four non zero shellcode sixty four. Uh, it directly read from the shellcode that bin file. So the, you need to use the shellcode that template and then write the dot s file and then. Uh, try to use a make uh, 32 or make 64, then it will automatically read uh, uh, from your shellcode that bin file. Yeah. Another character is like the why this is not alphanumeric. So, uh, so alphanumeric characters are like the uh, A to Z, the capital letter A to Z, and then like a number uh, zero to nine, and then the lowercase uh, uh, A to Z. And then these are like the so so the sum of the characters, for example, eighty nine, C seven, C six, or two uh, two F. This is slash, right? Yeah, these are not alphanumeric character at all. So, for example, slashes are here, and then the this kind of the backslash X B B. These are not four byte. So this character is actually one byte. Uh, it represented this uh, character B B because. Uh, this code, uh, this kind of the character code cannot be printed on the screen. So that's why like this kind of the uh, C like string uh, will use uh, this kind of notation backslash X BB. Yeah. So all these values are not alphanumeric at all. So it also has a semicolon here. So this is not a alphanumeric shellcode. But the alphanumeric shellcode uh, you will actually see only the uh, alphabets or numbers. And that means like there are lots of restrictions on like using some of the instructions. Yeah. So even you, you cannot use XOR because XOR instruction requires a uh, always requires a C0, C1, C2. Yeah. In that case, you cannot use that. Right. And then as I know, like the 48 is H and 31 is a one. But uh, you can use these two, bit, but uh, you cannot use uh, this C0, C1, C2, those kind of the values. And if you have other questions, uh, please post that to uh, either Piazza or uh, Discord. Then the TA and myself will uh, react fast for like the uh, give help or like the uh, answer your question. So you can search for that. Uh, you can search for the ASCII table, then like the uh, 41 to uh, 5F. No, not 5F. Uh, what is the character code of the Z? Yeah, 5E? No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so it's a capital A to capital Z. And then like a lowercase a to lowercase z, and also from zero to nine. Yeah, let's check. So it's a forty-one to fifty a, and then 
six one to seven a, and then the three zero to three nine. Yeah. Yeah. So these are capital letters, lower character letters, and then zero to nine. Yeah. Only these numbers. So that will be challenging, but uh, that will be very fun. So definitely worth it to try, but uh, please try that after solving all the challenges. Yeah. I do not wish to you drain all the time for like just solving the alphanumeric challenges and the uh, alphanumeric shellcode challenge and uh, uh, forgot to submit uh, all the other challenges uh, on time. Yeah. And thank you for your attention and let's conclude uh, today's uh, tutorial uh, here. Thank you. Thank you. And I will upload the video uh, as soon as it'll be ready on the cloud.